Ungemtrat. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. This is Anna. This is Lesson. And this is You've Got Five Options show. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. We are welcoming you to the second part of a challenge solution for Ella. It's about alcohol. If you have missed the first part, then you definitely need to visit our YouTube channel. Uh, it's enough just to go on YouTube and type in You've Got Five Options, subscribe, and you can find most of our episodes there, including live shows, and also, of course, the first part of this challenge solution. Or if you are a podcast person, you can definitely find us on a podcast app. So if you listen to podcasts on your mobile, you can just type in You've Got Five Options to whatever podcast application you use. We are there. Yes, and if you don't use any podcast application, then please visit our website, thefiveoptions.com. Go on the menu thingy. <laughs> okay, how professional of me. There is uh, at the top the menu and you can see podcast. Not only you can find our episodes on the website, you can also with one click get redirected to subscribe to our podcasts on iTunes, on any podcast app, on Stitcher, whatever you wish. But please do it. Yeah, so definitely if you just got confused with all the possible places where you can go, you can find it all at our website, the5options.com. Yes, our website is like this one big umbrella that have it all. The radio show, the YouTube channel and podcasts and articles because we also write articles so you can find all of this information there and it's the5options.com with five as a number. Okay, guys, but as I mentioned, this is a second uh, episode regarding the same challenge. The challenge came from Ella. This is the name we gave to the girl. And uh, Marta, can you remind us the challenge? Yes. So here comes the challenge from Ella. Hello. Lately, I've noticed something that worries me. When I go out and drink alcohol, more and more often I lose control over how much I drink. It starts nice and slow, but then after a couple of beers or shots, I end up really drunk, sometimes to the point when I don't remember what was I doing or how I got home. In the morning, I have a huge hangover, also the moral one, and I feel really embarrassed with myself. In the past, it was happening as well, but not very often, so I wasn't worried. Besides, everyone gets really drunk from time to time, right? But now it happens more often than not and I would really like to do something about it. I don't want to resign from alcohol completely. I just want to control it better. Do you have some ideas for me? And of course, as this is You've Got Five Options, we have even five ideas or five things to consider. And I will briefly, briefly remind you all of them. So number one, figure out the nature of your relationship with alcohol. Number two, identify the moments when you feel like drinking. Number three, take some time to figure out what is happening in your life. Number four, apply practical rules to your drinking habits. And number five, if you notice nothing works, seek help. So basically, those are the five options. And in the first episode, we had a nice discussion, first of all, about alcohol and uh, alcohol usage in general. And we have uh, discovered or actually rediscovered that we have in our, especially Western culture, a very strange relationship with alcohol, where actually it's totally acceptable for everyone 
and even sometimes required to drink on social occasions and gathering, yet alcoholism or an alcohol problem comes with a huge stigma and people are really ashamed of it. It was a great discussion, guys, so come back to the episode and and listen to it. And then we started to discuss the first option. Figure out the nature of your relationship with alcohol. Ella gave us a description. Uh, We don't know what are her other alcohol consumption patterns, but this is an option when we would like to ask her a couple of questions because, uh, as I mentioned, In the first episode, there is a difference between uh, abusing alcohol and being alcohol addicted. Um, And uh, there are some signs for both of those things. And sometimes we might not be aware that we have an alcohol problem unless we will just take a hard look at the signs, I will tell you, and at the mirror and realize I'm doing something wrong. So um, Ella is, at least this is what we read uh, from the description, Uh, coping with uh, issues that come from binge drinking. And we talked about binge drinking. It is um, when you are having a a quite big amount of alcohol in a very short time, and uh, that can cause uh, serious problems. So basically, the problems are many people are getting blacked out or they are getting very, very drunk. Uh, they are putting themselves in danger, they don't remember what happened, and so on. And now when I think about it, uh, you know, when you are going through a binge drinking, uh, you don't want this to be an outcome of the night, right? That's the funny thing. And you do it because of some reasons, either, yeah, we talked about the budget drinking, uh, so basically let's drink a lot home to save money, (laughs) uh, and so on. And when we start to do it, when we start to have this first, second drink, we don't want to end up blacked out, very drunk, embarrassed, hangover, and yet we do it. Isn't that an ironic thing? But, you know, when we talk about substances, <laughs> which are changing your ability to actually assess situation, of course, this is what happens. You are not able to assess your state. That's again, I will repeat it. I do encourage you to listen to our live show where we talk uh, about science behind drinking. But actually, you are not continuing to be able to assess the situation when you are under influence of alcohol because your mental state changes. So it actually is not ironic. <laughs> it's that's what you did. You took a substance that changes your mental condition. Revelation. So of course it is easy to be unable to assess what's happening with you. Yeah, and uh, you talked like uh, binge drinking and uh, pre-party or forfest, as we call it here in Denmark. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's completely normal to go to that, especially when you're younger. And the idea is that it's so expensive to go out uh, at any club in Denmark. So you meet up with your friends before and you just drink a lot and, you know, try to get uh, drunk before you actually go out. But it's not something that I, I didn't even think about it as a oh, this is like the get drunk party. It's just you go to this and you drink a lot. That's just what you do. Like, it's, it's like a, unwritten rule that this eh, will happen. I don't know. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's just like such a, I don't know, normal part of, of uh, Danish youth. I think a lot of it is also because there are some stereotypes about nationalities and one of them about Denmark. And there's probably a little bit of truth to some of these stereotypes. You know, Danes are kind of reserved, you know, very quiet. They stick to themselves. So if you want to go out and go crazy, oh, you have to drink to uh, break down this social, like, barrier or something like that so so i also think this this like part of danish culture is that when you go out well you have to drink uh, which is stupid um but but there is kind of this you know sometimes peer pressure well why are you not drinking come on get to drink like what are you, is it water no don't drink water drink this you know yeah. um but but yeah i think it's it's maybe also something about you know danish culture is that and it's stupid and you should just drink whatever you want but but there's this kind of if you go out you drink alcohol it sounds like a very big social problem <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, mm. i think it's in it's common in in many different countries as well but yeah but here when you say it it, it actually is the interesting part the the lack of awareness that, that you just mentioned like you don't even treat it as let's get drunk party although everyone assumes and most people you know you do it when you're really young yes and you just of course. you know it, that's where you mostly go to these like 
you know, pre-parties where mm-hmm. you just meet up with your friends at a friend's place and, yeah. you know, you party, have fun before you actually go out. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot, a huge part of it is because it's so expensive to go yes. out. So, yes, yeah. and it's like people, I think, think that if they will drink on stock, then it will somehow distribute itself over the night. But actually, that's not the effect. But Ella, we don't know, first of all, how old are you? We don't know your nationality. Uh, you Maybe it's not even relevant. We don't know if you are from Denmark or not. We assume you might be. Um, so it's hard to say if this is something like Lasse is explaining, a phase that you're going through, or maybe it's a different type of a, of a problem. That's why I would like you to, in this option, to figure out the nature of your relationship with an alcohol. And there are a couple of things that uh, we would like you to, to think about. Uh, because binge drinking is actually one of the symptoms of alcohol abuse. Alcohol abuse is uh, harmful behaviors, including yeah, binge drinking, driving while intoxicated, and drinking alcohol at the expense of participating in other activities. You start to experience negative consequences due to your drinking behavior. And basically, Ella, you do experience some negative consequences. You black out, you don't know how you got home, you feel embarrassed, and that definitely is negative consequence. But one uh, thing like binge drinking, if it's only this, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have a serious problem. But I would like you to think about other things and other things that are pointing out in a di- direction of a alcohol abuse problems are hiding or lying about al- alcohol consumption, using alcohol to cope with your day, be it stress or hardship, regular lapses in memory or blackouts. I think here you definitely have this one. Being unable to have just one drink. That can also be something, Ella, for you. Problems in relationships due to drinking. It doesn't necessarily mean with your boyfriend, but also family and friends. Attempts to abstain from drinking are many times unsuccessful. Someone close to you have told you that you are that they are worried about your drinking. And from time to time you are falling, uh, failing at your responsibilities at work, school or at home because of your drinking. And that might be, for instance, you are so hangovered that you are unable to either go to work and you have to call in sick or you are unable to show up at the class. So as we said, we don't know the is this your main problem? Is this o- the only problem? But please go through th- those things and then you can figure out the nature of, of, of your uh, challenge with alcohol. Because if it's binge drinking, then I guess we will have some things in option number four that can help you. But if it's something more serious that we would encourage you to look into other options as well. Uh, the difference between alcohol abuse and alcohol addiction is that addiction is a more, more severe version of all the symptoms you have seen, plus drinking the same thing over and over again at the same period of time. So, for instance, every night I drink, let's say, wine or whiskey. Um, drink seeking behavior, I go out only to the places when I have an occasion or an excuse to drink alcohol tolerance. So basically you need more and more alcohol to drink in order to get the same effect. Obtaining alcohol no matter what. So basically spending a lot of time planning to buy alcohol, buying alcohol, using alcohol and recovering from alcohol. And you are constantly failing at your responsibilities at work, school or at home because of your drinking. You are drinking alone in the mornings during work or school and you are continue to drink even if you know that you have problems and they are worsened by drinking but you simply cannot stop. So that is already defined as an alcohol addiction. So Ella, you have to really sit with all those points and just write it down and figure out what are your drinking patterns if it's only the situation you have described or maybe you have some additional symptoms mind dream time Olé! so anna will these points be available somewhere on facebook or our website to have a look yes yes they will be because i think uh, they are very important and i think it's also easier to come back to and just uh, have like a checklist of, of the things I I will also 
I think we will also publish a couple of articles or share on our Facebook page because I found a lot of interesting articles about how to determine if you have a problem with alcohol and uh, how hard it is and so on. So uh, definitely this will be all, all available. So guys, uh, you can find us on Facebook. Just type in you've got five options and then you'll be able to find all the useful information there. Yes, exactly. So um, Ella, this is, uh, this is a difficult task. I think it's a difficult task for everyone uh, because as we said, uh, alcoholism comes with uh, stigma or alcohol abuse actually com comes with stigma. Many times we don't want to look at our drinking behavior or our drinking habits. And uh, this is actually that kind of a reality check. And this comes from someone, meaning me, who actually had a problem with alcohol abuse. Um, all my life. Uh, I'm not defined as alcoholic as I educated myself, but I definitely had periods of my life when I had a problem with uh, alcohol abuse and that was actually connected with the binge drinking. So uh, overboarding with alcohol uh, while going out, not finding my limit and then blacking out, for instance, or um, waking up not, yeah, not remembering what I actually have done. So this is a uh, personal struggle of mine that I've been actually coping all my life. There were periods when uh, it was not happening. There were periods when it was happening. Um, but it's also very difficult to sit with yourself and admit I have a problem because many times also when I talk with my friends, we have that kind of, yeah, it happens to everyone from time to time. But you know, if it happens more often as Ella described, then it's not um, accidental. It's not like one time in two years, you know, there were cer certain circumstances, I haven't eaten, I got too much. If it happens more and more often, it is a problem of alcohol abuse. And that comes from someone who has, I would say still has this problem, because it's always a mental preparation before going out and trying not to repeat the same patterns. It's very brave of you, Anna, to actually come out of the closet. <laughs> oh, thank <laughs> no, you. No, it's, it's, it's really very brave of you because it is not easy to admit something like that in front of yourself, as you have mentioned, that uh, you actually have to admit to yourself and yet uh, to come up with it uh, at the radio show. So thank you for your uh, brave bravery and uh, honesty here. I hope that this will inspire some people to actually look into uh, that. I must say for myself, I blacked out only once in my life and never again. I didn't like it so much that I didn't remember what was going on. I was, of course, young. I was just starting with alcohol. I didn't know how it works and had a bad day, whatever. I blacked out once and I never again blacked out in my life. So. For me, it's like unthinkable. So I started to actually, when I was listening to you, I started to think about what determines this, that certain people are more prone to, you know, going into this kind of setup because I continue drinking. I drink alcohol. Okay, I've had years when I was not drinking because I was like, you know, pregnant many times Constantly. and breastfeeding, <laughs> and breast, breastfeeding long periods of time. Mm -hmm. but, but when I'm not pregnant and when I'm not breastfeeding, <laughs> I actually do uh, enjoy drinking alcohol, yet I just once got blackout and never wanted it again. So and it's not like I have to watch myself or stop myself from doing that. I naturally don't want to do that. I like, you know, I, I have that ability. Just one drink. Yeah, I like to enjoy just one drink and, and there is no problem for me to continue or so I'm thinking, where is it coming from? You know, this um, that some people, because I do know several people who go into that pattern of actually over drinking and going into that blackout mode and so on. What determines this? Because, of course, people have problems in life or challenges in life and so on. And yet some of them will go into that kind of pattern where they will drink way too much 
and really, you know, black out. And other people, they still use alcohol as some kind of a remedy to relax, to whatever, but they don't continue to that, so that extreme, to yeah. that extreme level yeah. where they can control themselves, where they don't know where it's going. And of course, I don't know about that. I'm no specialist. And I just thought that, uh, you know, where is this? What determines this? I can tell you something from my own experience. So when I was younger and by younger, that times when we met high school and university, I would say that getting uh, drunk too much among people, you know, especially at university was quite, let's call it normal, especially among guys. It's normal Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, you know, the student days, you, you just drink and, and stuff like this. But one thing I noticed was uh, that definitely uh, uh, my drinking has worsened when I was in a relationship with my uh, first boyfriend who was struggling with addictions. So uh, it was a long time ago, Lasse, so, you know, but still. So I remember that I was actually, you know, going down with him. Another thing was that I was uh, blessed or cursed with, at least in the past, really strong head for alcohol. So I could drink a lot. The funny part is that it was a source of pride for me. It is very interesting, but also for girls and for guys, it's a source of pride if you can drink a lot. You know, I can drink a lot. I don't have a weak head. So many times and I had a really fantastic days when I can drink a lot and I would drink the guys. But then there is this day when you can't. And I was actually just having this like a personality back in the day of a person who can drink a lot and actually have pride in it. And, you know, and guys were like, we like to drink with you, Anna, because you can drink a lot. I was young. And it was something to build on. And I had that kind of, let's say, more rebellious uh, personality or identity back in the day. It fitted very well. So that caused some problems, definitely. And then I got pregnant. I haven't drank for five years, Marta. You remember, you were actually very surprised after I gave birth to my daughter, stopped breastfeeding, I still was not drinking. I actually started to drink beer here and there five years after I got pregnant. So it, it's actually quite interesting. And then again, I came back to consumption of alcohol, yet not on a very high, let's say, levels. And then around 30, my life has, has changed again. And I was going through a divorce. I was going through a very difficult things. And then I noticed that I started to drink more. And you don't notice it in a, in a way that, oh, I'm drinking more. It's like I was going out. I was somehow overboarding, sometimes to the extent when I was blacking out, not remembering what was happening. So I can see that there is something very much from my old identity as a, as a teenager um, when I thought that actually it's okay and cool to drink a lot. And I've noticed this still among some of my friends or colleagues. Plus, I also have noticed that I, my drinking increases when I go through personal struggles, stress and difficult situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can say that people cope with those things differently. But in my case, it was yeah basically that part of identity that I am a person who drinks. And you know, I actually come from a family when alcohol is very acceptable. And uh, funny story, my father actually thinks that uh, girls should be able to drink like guys in order to protect themselves, I guess. Weird, weird philosophy. But even my father was encouraging me after, of course, I turned 18 to drink with him, you know, to learn how to drink. So it's, in my case, a lot of um, upbringing plus identity that conditioned me naturally to go that way. Yeah, and that's that's actually very, very valid points, because in Poland, it is a source of pride. If you can drink a lot, you are a really cool person. It's definitely not cool to get wasted, uh, for sure. So in Poland, actually, you would try to hide if you are getting wasted. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's a source of pride to, to be able to drink a lot, but it's definitely not a source of pride uh, to uh, to get too drunk. So uh, there is some bipolarity in Poland as well. Definitely. But it, it is a big uh, part of our national identity, being able to drink a lot. 
that's yes. uh, yeah that's something that in Poland uh, we take pride in so that's also a sign of there is something wrong uh, here <laughs> definitely definitely but I think this is what conditioned me and I always thought I have such an addictive personality and so on maybe I do maybe I don't uh, that was one of the reasons I never went into drugs because I was simply too afraid to of course, except of the fact that trucks are illegal. Duh. But uh, I was like, okay, I'm not even, tr I, I see I have some sort of issues with alcohol. <laughs> I will not go into drugs because, you know, things might happen. So uh, maybe that saved me from some really bad experiences. Well, anyway, I can see that uh, in my case, this was a normal, regular, standard way of Parting, showing uh, some sort of strength as a girl, plus it really is that. And so many times I have heard, like, you know, problems, drink it away, you know, that kind of attitude. I remember even recently uh, when I uh, when I was laid off from my uh, from my previous work, I got messages from my friends. Let's get drunk. I will bring a bottle of wine. I will bring a bottle of vodka. Joke or not joke first standard reaction and then you basically go into that kind of thing you know and when you come with a bottle of vodka you don't stop on one shot you drink the whole vodka so i think that that at least is my personal answer i don't know if this helped anyone but maybe marta you can then think why you were not having these patterns i don't know so well for me th this part of i could also drink a lot uh, when I was uh, young without Correcto. getting yeah, without getting drunk and I was always the one who was taking care of all the friends. So for sure I could take that pride in I don't get drunk or I have you know I can drink a lot and I don't get wasted. So I was in some way also having this kind of thing. But you know for me I think I really really think it is counterproductive to have hangover. I am like, what the hell? Just a thought of having the next day wasted. I'm like, why would I want to do it to myself? So for me, it's very much like if I see that something is really bad for me, yeah, I feel really, really bad the next day. Why would I want to do it to myself? So that's the way for me. That's the way it works for me. I must say I enjoy a glass of a good you know, alcohol. So for example, for me, a glass of nice gin and tonic or something, that's something I enjoy. But thinking about having an amount of drinks and feeling bad the next day, I'm like, why the hell would I want to do it for myself? That's what goes on in my head. So I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't remember last time I got drunk, literally, like that I would not be able to function normally the next mm -hmm. day. Uh, so that's something that goes on in my head. But actually, as preparing for that challenge and live show, I was really asking myself a question. What's up with the alcohol? Why do we humans, especially in this Western society, why do we reach out for it so much? for so many different reasons. We spoke a little bit about what what's going on in Denmark. Lesa told us a little bit about it. We talked a little bit about the Polish culture and this uh, taking pride in being able to drink a lot. We talk about Japanese, we talk about business, we talk about, you know, you have a problem, go get out drinking. So I think it's some kind of human challenge with being able to cope with our own emotions and it's our escape mechanism because you feel that constant reward plus you have a social cultural and even political if we take in consideration it's legal approval for drinking it's normal you have it in shops, you have it in bars, you, what are the commercials for uh, alcohol? You know, you have a great time, it's sunny, people are dressed nice and they have drinks. It's so approved, it's so imprinted in our brains. You are so totally right because it, it seems so acceptable. If, if you will go with a beer, will someone say oh, something is wrong with you? No, if you will start to smoke pot, you will get all the scrutiny from all the people, you know, all oh, drug user. But it's only one thing. Alcohol is legal and widely acceptable. That is the thing, I think. That's yeah. the key. But let's say you are a rebel. 
Mm -hmm. And you are actually a person that notices that there are some unhealthy behaviors in the society that makes you do stuff that are not necessarily the best for you. And then you are still not breaking that pattern, right? Mm -hmm. You are still, I mean, not you, you like you, Anna, but you as a human, Mm -hmm. you still have this mechanism to go out for it, even though you know it's actually damaging your health, Mm -hmm. even though you will feel really bad the next day you still go for it. So what's what's up with us humans that we want to do it to ourselves? The mother of all questions. You know, that was really the question that I've been asking myself and we can leave our listeners with uh, that question. Guys, we will talk to you in our next episode about the same challenge. So uh, stay tuned and then we will go through the next options. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Bye. You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, thefiveoptions.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks.